Okay, today we're going to start looking at our angles that we're going to do for the rest of this unit. And the first thing we're going to look at is what happens when we have parallel lines and how do those angles compare and relate to each other. So that's our topic for today. You should find this stuff fairly easy, um, but we've got to backtrack and make sure we're clear on a few definitions. So the first thing we want to understand is what a supplementary angle is. So a supplementary angle is if we have a straight line... So we have a straight line and then we cut that line into two different angles. So the question is, how do those two angles compare? So if I gave you this angle here to be 40 degrees, we know that the other angle has to be 140 because if they're supplementary angles, they make a straight line, we know that a straight line has to add up to 180 degrees. So a supplementary angle always going to be the two angles side by side on a straight line and they're always going to add up to 180. So if I gave you a different one, if I gave you a situation like that and we knew this angle was 120 degrees, then using the 180 rule we'd have 180 minus 120. We know that that angle would be 60 degrees. Okay, so that one's pretty basic and we've done this before so we're just kind of reviewing that the 180 rule would give you those two angles adding up to 180. Now what happens is if we sort of continue our supplementary, supplementary system, but instead of just having one straight line and one angle cutting off it, we're going to look at two lines that crisscross and make sort of an X pattern. So using the same logic, if I gave you this angle here being 120 degrees, using the supplementary idea we know that the one beside it has to be 60 right because those two are a straight line but then we also get these two here being a straight line so that means this one also has to be 60 and then going one step further we know that the 60 and this missing angle down here makes a straight line so we kind of go around the circle and we know that that one would have to be 120 as well so opposite angles are just basically an extension of supplementary angles where we have a, a crisscross or an X in the lines and then the angles that are across from each other have to be the same. So we have 120, across from it has to be 120, 60 and 60 and so on. So if I gave you a different question where we had two lines crossing something like that and I told you this angle here was 150 degrees you'd only need to know one of them and you could figure out any of the other ones. So we know that the opposite one has to be 50 because opposite angles are the same and then that means the other two using supplementary ideas they have to add up to 180 and they also have to be the same. So opposite angles are equal. That's the key thing to remember. Opposite angles are equal. Supplementary angles add up to 180. Opposites are always equal. Now we're going to extend it one further where we're going to actually have two lines and we have an X or a line going through both of them. So in this case we have to be careful that if these lines are parallel, so if they're parallel usually they get drawn like little arrows like that showing that they're parallel. So that means they're like railroad tracks, they're going to be straight and even. So now if that's the case we have sort of two sets of intersecting lines. So this line that we cut it, sometimes we call it a transversal or transverse line. Okay, so if you have two transversal or a transversal going through a parallel parallel lines, then what happens is we get sort of two sets of opposite angles. So if, let's suppose in this question we knew that this angle was 50 degrees, so then we know using the opposite rule that this has to be 50, and then if once we know that those are 50, we use the supplementary rule, so then we know that these ones here have to be 130, right, because we have 180 minus the 50, and then those are opposite, so they have to be the same. So now if this is the second sort of X down below where it's crossing the second parallel line, if they're parallel lines, we see that these angles are also the same. So that means that 130 at the top is going to be the same as the 130 here down below. So we call that a corresponding angle. So corresponding angles are the ones that are in the same spot, but just on the different X. So the top left on the top is corresponding to the 130 on the bottom. The 50 on the top, the green one, that'll correspond to the 50 down below. Okay? 
and let's write this one in yellow so this one was 130 so its corresponding would be the 130 down below and the last one I'll change that one to blue so if that one's 50 the corresponding for that one would be the 50 down below there okay so this rule is when you have two parallel lines the corresponding angles are also equal okay so for two parallel lines all corresponding angles are equal if and then the reverse would happen if I gave you a question where we had two lines and we're not sure if they're parallel or not and if I told you that this angle up here was 125 degrees and I told you that this angle down here is 125 degrees the reverse happens because those angles are the same because those corresponding angles are both 125 then that would mean that these two lines have to be parallel okay or we could do it the opposite if I said this angle was 125 and the one down below was 127 degrees now they're not the same so 125 degrees doesn't equal 127 so therefore those are not parallel lines so these two lines would not be parallel ones at a bit of an angle so the rules can work both ways you can sort of use the angles to figure out whether they're parallel or if they you know that they're parallel then we know that the angles have to be the same there's one more set of angles that we have to be aware of are two more sets the first one is interior alternate angles so we know already let me put this back in in the diagram so we know that if this one was 150 degrees then we knew this one here was 30 and we knew the opposites had to be the same but if they're alternates so let's do that first let's do 150 there so that'd be 100 and 50 and 30 like that, we'd have 30 and 30 and 150 150 and 150, so if all the angles match perfectly, we, they all add up to 180 and all the correspondings are the same we know that these two lines have to be parallel and now there's also other angles that we have, so our supplementary angles, remember we're the ones side by side, they add up to 180 we know our opposites, so the two 150s and the 30s, right? those are opposites, they have to be the same. Our correspondings, we were all the blue ones, so all the 150s are corresponding angles, and then our 30s were the other corresponding angles. So corresponding are the same, all opposites are the same, the other ones that are the same are the alternate interior angles and the alternate exterior angles. So those ones are, you just got to remember interior, like interior of a house is on the inside, so what we're talking about are the angles on the inside. So in this case, the 30 on the inside here and the 30 on the inside there, those are alternate interior angles. Okay, so the 30 degree the yellow ones would be alternate interiors. Then we also have another set of alternate interiors and that would be the two 150s. So when you see alternate, that just means opposite, sort of the opposite side. So the 150 on the bottom, is going to be the same as the 150 on the top. Okay, so those are our first set of alternate interior angles. So the 30 degrees and the 150 are both alternate interiors. Now the same thing works for the exterior. So the alternate exterior in this case would be the two 150s in blue. Right, they're on the outside. Exterior means outside, and they're opposite of the line. So 150 and 150 and then our other one would be the 230s in red so they're 50 in blue or the 30 in red those would be alternate exteriors so all of these different angles that we're looking at we just see that you know they follow a pattern they're always the same they always either add up to 180 or they're equal to each other so opposite corresponding and alternate angles interior or exterior are always the same and then supplementary they add up to 180. So all of these rules can basically answer any kind of question we're going to get. So let's do a couple examples. So the first one is if I give you this and my question is assuming that these lines are parallel I want to know which angle is opposite of A. So opposite of A would be the one across from it which is D. So those are the same. Okay, so opposite are the same. And there's more than that. We could do B and C, 
or E and F, or G, E and H, or G and F. All of those are opposites. Okay, let's do supplementary. So a supplementary angle. Okay, so supplementary angles would be something like A and B. So A plus B equals 180 degrees. That would make it supplementary. Or we could do A and C. Those are also supplementary. Okay, or we could do C and D or E and F or E and G. There's lots of different choices. Corresponding, let's do corresponding. So corresponding would be any angle that's in the same spot but down in the other intersection. So in this case, corresponding to G is angle C, and those are going to be the same. Or corresponding to F would be angle B, and those got to be the same. So corresponding are always equal. And then let's do our interior alternate. So interior alternate angles would be E. If I give you E, the interior alternate angle is D, and those are the same. Or I could give you C and F, those are going to be the same. And our last one was exterior alternate, and those would be on the outside, so G and B are exterior alternates and they're the same, and A and H are exterior alternates being the same. So you can see we got lots of different choices, and there's also another pattern that we can do that's not as important. So we have two interior angles that are side by side. E and C, so in this case, those ones, those two interior angles would be kind of like supplementary, right? E and G are supplementary, A and C are supplementary, so C and E would be also supplementary or they would also add up to 180. And the same thing for the outside angles. So if I gave you two exterior angles that aren't alternate, those ones also would add up to 180. Okay, so those ones we're not going to do as often, but obviously because the numbers repeat, you can see lots of different patterns that happen with these. And we'll stop there.